globalization driven by corporation is a very, very big reason for poverty. Because poverty is not having only lack of money, it is having your land taken away. The biggest land grab of our times has happened in the 20 years of globalization. That is poverty. It's water poverty, it's food poverty, it's livelihood poverty. Globalization is designed for it. And the globalizers, globalizers talk the language. It's all right for small farmers to disappear because they must, because they want a market for their giant machinery, for their huge chemicals. They want an agriculture that is war, came from war, will look like war. But if we don't stop the 1%, who have become 1% with 20 years of deregulation, 20 years of financialization where they've taken everything and turned it into speculative finance, where corporations and investment funds that were 50 billion are now 4 trillion and they own all the corporations. The corporations are owned by the billionaires. There are 8 billionaires controlling half the wealth of the world. They don't care both because they're stupid and they think they'll escape to Mars when this planet is finished, and because they are working on the idea of dispensability and disposability of 99%. So if they continue, there is no future of humanity on Earth. That is why 99% must rise, wake up, become conscious, and realize that this war against the planet must end. That the war against the planet that is triggering wars between people, after all the refugee crisis, is a result of the land being desertified, water disappearing in Syria, around Lake Chad in Nigeria. And as that desertification spreads, there's a desertification of the economy. And we need to remember we are one humanity on one planet. That is where we will find the common solutions. The reason we have to stop agreements like CETA is because we have seen what 20 years of globalization rules written by corporations have done to the planet and what they've done to people. India has lost 300,000 farmers to suicide because these corporations thought it was their right to sell seeds at any price. It will destroy democracy in every country because in basic terms it takes away the right to decide from constitutions and from people and puts it in the hand of these anonymous trade officials who represent the corporations. I think the whole problem we face is because violence in the mind, the entire idea of looking at the world in a militarized way, of being at war with nature, being at war with plants, and therefore needing herbicides like glyphosate, being at war across cultures, we have to realize that we are diverse, and the relationship in diversity is non-violence. We have to practice agriculture without chemical warfare. That's why we must have non-violent agriculture. Non-violence, in my view, is stronger than violence. Stronger because it builds the resilience of the spirit. And no power on earth, no force on earth can crush a spirit.